Welcome back everybody. So today is going to be obviously a very different video to normal. I have left the screens and I just thought I would kind of give some insights in terms of how institutions might be assessing the value proposition of Bitcoin from a credit default swap perspective. Now, I've been kind of thinking about this quite a bit and I think it's a very interesting way in terms of assessing the value proposition of Bitcoin. So, okay, so let me explain how credit default swap contracts actually work. Now, obviously this is just an example, but you can kind of see the value proposition from an institutional perspective. So let's say you are trying to put a lot of money to work in a specific country and you want to take downside protection just in case that country goes bankrupt for whatever reason or they can't pay their debt obligations. So what you can what you can do is you can go to the credit default swap market. So let's say you are an institution and you want to get insurance on $10 million in the United States. Now to insure $10 million, let's say it is 100 basis points or let's say 1% just for this example, right? So now for you to take out that contract, you have to pay $100,000 every single year to keep that contract open. So now the reason why it is very, very useful, I mean, obviously we're talking about the United States here, but obviously different countries have different types of credit ratings and obviously different levels of risk. So the reason why it is very, very interesting is because let's say on that $10 million contract, let's say the US does not pay its debt. And obviously let's say the US gets paid out let's say 40 cents on the dollar, that contract, what currently is costing you $100,000 a year, would be valued at $6 million if the United States obviously goes bankrupt um, and, and obviously cannot meet its debt obligations. So the reason why obviously you would take out these contracts is just in case anything like that actually happens. Now, obviously around the world, we've seen it happen before in Greece, we've seen it happen before in Cyprus, in Argentina, and I'll try and put that on the screen for you now, but it just gives you a really good understanding in terms of how institutions are assessing risk and insurance from a sovereign debt, and obviously from a credit default swap perspective as well. So you are typically taking out these contracts with very large institutional banks. So there's third party risk, but also as well, there's also an expiry date on these contracts as well. Now, from a Bitcoin perspective, there is no third party risk and there is obviously no expiry date. Now, when looking at the global market in terms of global debt market, you can pretty much, I'll try and put it on the screen, but you can pretty much see that it's hovering around, that it's hovering around 400 trillion. Now, obviously if you take, let's say, a you know, 50 basis points in terms of insurance, obviously if the, if the entire global debt system pretty much goes insolvent, um, what level of insurance would you be willing to pay to obviously insure $400 trillion? Now, obviously, if you do a rough calculation, you will see that 50 basis points on 400 trillion is currently $2 trillion. And obviously, the I think the market cap at the moment of Bitcoin is around 1.5 to 2 trillion. So it's a very, very interesting instrument in terms of taking out insurance from a, from a sovereign debt crisis, and let's say the entire debt market in general. Now, obviously there's gonna be some people who massively disagree, and that is obviously absolutely fine. I mean, obviously from a Bitcoin perspective, I mean, we can debate Bitcoin all day long, but I think from a institutional perspective, and obviously from a hedge fund perspective, I think it does kind of give a certain level of insurance on the entire debt monetary system. Now, obviously I am fully aware that this is a very different way to obviously look at Bitcoin and obviously how to evaluate Bitcoin. And when you start to factor in the global debt levels over the next, let's say 10, 20, 30 years, you can start to see why Bitcoin would be a very good insurance product in terms of protecting your, in terms of protecting your overall downside risk in case, let's say, governments around the world start to print an obscene amount of money and obviously start to get into more and more debt. Now, obviously you could make the argument for gold as well, but I think it's just a very interesting way to assess the risk. So this is the reason why I think Bitcoin is a very interesting instrument. What institutions and obviously hedge funds could be potentially using 
in terms of taking out, let's say, a credit default swap contract on the entire global debt market. Now, obviously, what I'll do is I'll put on the screen the current debt levels from this year and obviously the next, let's say, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 60 years. And obviously what you've got to kind of take into consideration as well is that a lot of these countries have a lot of funded and unfunded liabilities, what they have to pay over the next 50 years. And obviously, how are they going to fund all of that? But yeah, obviously, I'm fully aware that this might be a little bit of a complicated topic for a few people, but hopefully you've got some value out of it. And I think it's just a very interesting way to obviously look at Bitcoin's value proposition. To the one person who's made it this far, thank you very much. I know this is probably sounds a little bit of a dry subject and a dry topic, but I really do think that there's different levels of value, how different types of institutions will be assessing Bitcoin. And I think this is a very interesting way to look at the value proposition of Bitcoin from a credit default swap perspective. So for that one person who's made it this far, I hope you're having a lovely day. Take care. <laughs> there is a dog crossing the river. I don't know why he's crossing that way when he could just go over here. But um, obviously, I hope he makes it. Come on, lad. Go on, lad. When he's going to make it, he's going to make it. And he's made it. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. <laughs> anyway.